cross to welcome to snickerdoodle stitch my name is kathleen and this is a channel about cross stitch so welcome everybody um let's see it's been a busy couple of weeks i had a trip to salt lake for work and so while i was in salt lake city i did get the opportunity to drive up to ogden and visit shepherd's bush and then down to west jordan to visit um pine needles which is a quilt and cross stitch shop and I have some haul, a little bit of haul. I, did, I didn't buy too much uh, from both of those places that I'll share toward the end of the video. Um, and I did go to, I'm trying to remember the name of it, Creative Something of Fine Stitchery. It was not too far from Pine Needles. And I suspected they might be out of business because when I looked them up on Needle Travel, which reminds me, if you've never checked out needletravel.com, it is a fantastic site where you can filter on needlepoint, cross stitch, quilting, all kinds of different needlework. Um, so I usually filter on cross stitch and quilting since I enjoy both. Um, and then it will tell you all the shops in the state and you click on the state and then it breaks it out by like metropolitan areas or individual cities and it's a fantastic source to hunt down whether there's a needle workshop in any destination where you might be visiting. So I had found the um, creative something of fine stitchery on needle travel and I had I knew people that had visited the shop. But when I clicked the hyperlink from needle travel to their website, it gave me the URL not found and I found a blog, but posts were very old and I suspected they may have gone out of business, but it wasn't too far from Pine Needles. So I made the little jaunt over there and yeah, they closed, I think it said their last day open was February 25th. So I missed it by a month. Uh, so that was disappointing, but probably just as well because I don't need to be buying a ton of stuff. Um, so I had that trip and then this last weekend I went away with some friends of mine to a quilt retreat house. There was five of us and we went and sewed and stitched for a long weekend. I actually flew back from Salt Lake and drove straight from the airport there. So I missed the first day because I was traveling back, but um, had a fantastic time with the ladies. And actually I'm going to be seeing most of them again this weekend because there is a quilt convention in Pennsylvania. It used to be in Lancaster or Lancaster area. And now it's a little bit farther north, so it's called the Lec Lancaster Lebanon Quilt Show now. Um, so yeah, we've got an Airbnb and we're going to spend a couple nights up there and check out the quilt show. And I'm hoping to get a lot of stitching in as well, neat cross-stitch stitching. Um, most of the folks I'm going with are signed up for some classes and I won't shop there for two full days. So I probably will stay behind at the Airbnb and do some stitching. So I've got lots of things to show. I did get some stitching. I got some finishing done while at my quilt, quilt quilting weekend this past weekend. And I did get a quilt top finished, although I'm not going to show it this time because I haven't had a chance to iron it yet. And it does need a good pressing before um, it will look like much of anything. But it's the poinsettia stars that I started back in the winter and I got it completely finished. Um, so I want to get it pressed and then film it so I can get it off to the long armor. So maybe next episode i'll talk toward the end about my plans for the next couple of episodes um or as we go along here so last episode i announced um i had gotten this pattern by mistake from garon stitchery if you've never checked them out they're a fantastic site their customer service is fabulous love those guys i will be going to stitching in the wild their retreat again this fall i went last spring to their first one although they have since moved from Fort Lauderdale to Alabama. So this year the retreat will be in Montgomery and I've never visited there. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And they are getting ready to open an LNS in Ozark, I think, Alabama, um, which I Googled and is about 90 minutes south of Montgomery. So I don't know if I'll make it to the LNS when I'm there for the Stitching in the Wild retreat, but that's six months away. I'll figure that out somewhere down the line. But anyway, they sent me this pattern by mistake, this gather at the table. And yes, I know many people love purple. I mentioned last video that although I love this pattern, when I'm going through my stash, it's never going to grab my attention to pull out and kit up because it has purple in it. And I'm not a huge 
It's not that I don't like purple. It's just not really in my decor anywhere. Um, I don't have a lot of it in my clothes, although I will wear a dark purple occasionally. Um, and yes, winter's almost over, so you won't have to look at me in dark green anymore. Um, this is close to my favorite color, and it's really only available in the winter. And I have uh, 30 sweatshirt thing tops in this color because it is my favorite color. Anyway, um, I had announced the drawing for Gather at the Table, and I used the YouTube picker and picked a winner. So the winner is Connie Simonich, 2327. So Connie, if you're watching, um, I will put a message on the YouTube video replying to you that you're the winner. And I just need you to use the link that's in my description to my email and send me your name and address so that I can get this mailed off to you. Um, while we're talking about drawings, my Flossiversary will be April 20th. And my next video should be, what's today, the 12th, should be April 26th. So in my next video, I have several charts that I'm going to put up for giveaway. Um, but I probably am not, am not going to do the actual drawings for four weeks. I've got to have some surgery in early May. And I don't want to commit to having a drawing in two weeks because I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be up to doing a video. My normal schedule every two weeks, that would be only a few days after my surgery. Um, and I'm not sure I'm going to be up to doing a video and I'm not sure I might have some driving restrictions for a little bit. So I'm not sure I can get to the post office and I like to be able to mail things promptly. So that's the plan. Two weeks from now, that video, I will show the patterns and give you the code words to put in comments. And we'll give those away for Flossiversary. It's some of the patterns that you would have seen over the past year that I just have missed giving random drawings. I meant to do them more frequently and I, I just lost track of doing those for a while. Um, and then a month later, I'll do the drawings. And there may or may not be a video in the interim. Um, the good thing is I will have lots of laid up time, just a couple weeks. The recovery they're telling me is about two weeks. So... Um, for two weeks, I plan on doing nothing except sleep, and I'm not a big napper, so unless I have side effects from surgery that have me sleepy, um, I'll be stitching nonstop for two weeks. So I should have a ton, got ready to curse, I should have a ton of uh, finished or started or significant progress stitching to show. Um, all right. This last weekend, I did work on some, some FFOs. So I had shown before this Erin Elizabeth Designs Home Tweet Home. This is the pattern and I wanted it for a small, just for like Valentine's Day. And even though it was well after Valentine's Day, um, I was looking for a quick stitch and this got pulled and I FFO'd it. So I just, I've um, made it like a pin cushion, so there's some fiber fill, um, and then it's it's drawn around a piece of mat board for the back, and then I have it glued into this tart tin, and I did put a little bit of rickrack around. I originally thought I was gonna paint the tart tin black um, to match the roof, because it's kind of a dark, antique, bronzy, brown color. But I decided in person that I liked it fine this way. So that was a, I would say a pretty simple finish, although it did take a lot of fighting for me to, so you've got your circle of fabric with your stitching on it. You do a running stitch all the way around the outside edge so that you can use that for gathering. And you sort of gather it a little bit to make like a shower kind of shaped thing. And you ball up your fiber fill and put it on top of your, of your mat board or whatever you're using for your solid back. And you sort of insert that in and then you pull your drawstring. Um, but I had a lot of trouble getting my fiber fill to not be lumpy. It's still a tiny bit lumpy, but I decided it was good enough and gave up on it. Um, it it's really just up here. There's one little divot right here that makes me crazy. You can't even see it on camera, so it's just me being fussy. Um, but yeah, 
That was a fun stitch and an easy finish. It's on Graceful Gray 32 count and it's just stitched with the called for DMC. Um, it was a very quick stitch, but it's FFO'd and now I'm probably gonna leave it. I, I have red in parts of my house, so I'm probably gonna leave it sit out for a little while before I pack it away with, um, I'll put it in with the snowmen. I have a tub of just snowmen stuff and I'll put it in with that because that would be after Christmas that I get that out. So the right time for Valentine's Day stuff. So I had that FFO and then I had shown the Croquetta Go-Go. I'm not gonna try saying this one. The name is up here. Um, it's Italian, I believe, and I don't know even how to pronounce Italian. So, and it's not close enough words to, well, anyway. I did the bunny and the hen. I had them finish stitching and I have one completely finished and that's the bunny. So I finished it just with some pink, uh, pink and white, like Swiss dot, uh, no, it's not Swiss dot, polka dotted um, cotton on the back. And then I put this little chenille and that's the chenille that I showed that came from Marshall's. It's normally in their gift wrapping section. And I have found that there are different times of the year. I had, this one was off a spool that was completely white and it was 10 yards, I think, for four bucks or something like that. So it's super cheap there. And I have another spool that has a red, a red and a white, and a white in it. And that was at Christmas time that I found it. So I got this one finished. And then the hens, I, I finished it in the pillow as well with the polka dots, but I haven't finished the edge on it. I want to do like some ruched ribbon and some little beads holding it in place. But when I was digging for beads after I got home, um, I couldn't find my tiniest like delicas, which is what I need to do that. And I didn't have any pinks in my mill house stash. Um, and then actually just tonight driving home from dinner with friends, I remembered where the delicas are. So kicking myself because I could have finished this when I got home Sunday. So I, they would both be completely finished. But you'll be seeing this one again once it truly is FFO'd. Right now it's, it could be a finish like this. Um, although I've got a little stuffing that's popping out there that you can see. Um, but yeah, my plan is just to do a different type of trim around the edge on it. So those were my FFOs. Um, I do have a finish. So it's ready for FFOing. Um, maybe by next video, I will have it completely FFO'd. But this was from the Cricut Collection Bed and Bath One. And you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot to mention for anybody that hadn't seen these before, they are on 18 count Vintage Country Mocha Ada. So um, I like using high count Adas. I just kind of build up my stash when I was at Needle Fest Extravaganza because I can do it without any type of magnification, but get really small. So, you know, 18 count Ada is the equivalent of stitching on 36 count linen over two, um, but 36 count, I've got to use some kind of magnification. And with that, I didn't need that. So, okay, back to what I was saying I had finished. The Cricut Collection, Bed and Bath One. This is the pattern, it's an oldie. You can see it's number 185, and I think they're up in the like 300 somewhere. And it's this top one that I did. And um, it says happy ending, although down here they have it without the stack of books and go away. And that, that's really cute there, um, like to put on the door. But I was doing this one at the top and I'm doing it to make into a clock for my bathroom. And it is on 28 count. It's either Lagoon Blue or Blue Lagoon. It was a Zweigart and I don't think they make it anymore because I was looking for some more for stash and I can't find it anywhere. And I wanted to ask um, Jim or at Needle Fest Extravaganza, but they were so busy. Um, but I need to talk to someone who like, Dills and Zweigart if they know 
was that truly like discontinued, but um, I finished it. So what I had left to do was all of this, it's this Nordic, I've got the card up here. It's this Nordic gold um, ND4 is the name is the name of the thread it was a beast to work with um if i had it to do again i would use chronic i find chronic a little um easier this was like a braid it's like a couple plies twisted together and you use it that way it doesn't really unravel but what it does do is kink and knot and make a mess so i did learn working with it that i needed to really just cut like maybe a 10 inch length of that and a 10 inch length of my floss that was blended with it and just stitch like 10 inches. And then the other thing I would do is on the needle, instead of having a long tail, I would pull it so there was only about a one and a half inch tail. It didn't really slip out because the, the, the metallic floss is not very slippery, um, but it was less of the double layers than to drag through the fabric. And I found that it knotted a little, little less doing that, but, um, it looks a little lumpy and a mess up close, which is how I'm showing it to you. It's not really, if I pulled it out or if I looked really closely, it's just the way the floss and the metallic braid twisted together kind of gives that appearance and there are some it's not showing up on camera very well but there's some sections in there that are just floss um that don't have the yeah i can't get it to show up it's the same color of floss as was blended with the nordic gold but it doesn't have the blending with it and it in person sort of gives it a dimensionality so that you get the effect of bubbles. It's not showing up on camera. But my plan for this, and why it's on this big piece of fabric, is to mount a clock down here. So I've got a big frame for it already. Um, I got my clockworks from Amazon already. I've never bought them from them, so hoping they're a decent quality. I usually have pretty good luck with stuff. Um, but I do need to spray paint the um, shoot, what are they called? The, the, uh, the dial things, the things that go around. Hands. I've got to, I've got to paint the clock hands white because, um, they're black and I, and I want white to show up on this dark green fabric that I can't get anymore. Um, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with that and anxious to get, get it mounted and, and the clock face put down here. I had originally thought I would put a bubble at like 12, 6, 3, and 9 using the metallics, um, but I hated using those metallics so much that I'm going to, I think, just put the clock face on there. Once I get the hand spray painted, I'm going to lay them on here and see do I like them that way without any kind of numbers or um, markings. Um, I mean, usually it's for the bathroom and usually I'm really just looking to see how f I know what hour or half hour it is. I'm just looking to see like how many minutes it is. Like, do I need my button gear to get where I'm going? So, uh, really happy with that and completely done. That's always fun to have a finish. Um, all right. I have a start. When I went to Shepherd's Bush, I really, really wanted to get a Shepherd's Bush pattern and ideally start it while I was there. I did, so Shepherd's Bush was a lovely store. It, you can tell that they've been there a long time because they have models going clear to the ceiling and some of them go back to the 90s. Um, I've been stitching Shepherd's Bush since the early 90s, so mid 90s, early mid 90s, somewhere in there, 94-ish. Um, but I did have a challenge where everything that I saw as a model that I wanted the pattern, they didn't have the pattern. Um, and that wasn't just for their line of patterns. That was kind of everything there. I was looking at the witchy wash, which is from raise the roof. And I would have bought that there, but they didn't have that. I do know that Garon usually carries that. So I'm probably going to hop over there and look and see, and maybe not close till closer to Halloween when everybody's stocking up on their Halloween patterns. It's not the thing they maybe want to have in stash now, although Gary might because he loves Halloween all the time. Um, 
The models are just complete eye candy. It, it's a medium sized store, but there are so many gorgeous models there and a lot of custom frames that um, have been painted or really done specifically for the shepherd's bush that that was delightful just to look at all of their stitch things and get that inspiration um super sweet um people working in the shop that day i don't there was there was just one lady in the front and i don't know if she was the owner or not um but she was very nice and she was busy moving out because I was there Monday so it was the day after Easter and she was moving spring Easter to the back and rotating up some summer but I did find and I bought it as a kit which I wouldn't have I thought at the time it was a little pricey but it's got 12 overdyed over pluses in it so it's gonna be and then it had the piece of linen but it was the one pattern that I really liked the sample of that I could find the pattern or the kit and it was the kit so I did go ahead and buy it and it is this Summer Notes, um, and they have a whole line of notes. There's a Spring Notes, um, I thought there was some description about it on the back. Oh yeah, it's part of a growing series of note patterns. Please see our other designs. So I got the kit for it and I did go ahead and start it. So it's fun to have a start actually from Shepherd's Bush, from my trip to Shepherd's Bush. Um, it will always carry that memory for me. So I made some pretty good progress. I, if you look at the chart, um, I got the most solid stitching done. So the house and the pond here and some of these trees and the flagpole, there are a couple buttons on there. The actual flag is a button um there's a little b here that's a button and then the centers of these flowers are actually buttons so i got this chunk down here done and a lot of the chart is back stitch and i'm okay with that but it came with 32 count i think it's flax yep flax linen um so probably kind of fun that it was kitted up because it takes me out of my normal zone. I would have been looking for something bluish grayish to stitch it on. And I actually have a couple things on flax or standard linen that are like antique linen weight that are happening now, but really happy with this so far. And that blue in the pond is, um, mm, sorry, I got to remember. Oh, blue heron. And it has some really nice var variegation. Now there is a different blue that's making that little scallopy wave there. But other than that, and a tiny bit over right here, um, it's just the variegation in blue heron. So it's a really nice variegated blue for water. Now you can actually maybe see the variegation better a little further back. And I have it in a not fancy project bag because it's just in the bag that the uh that the the pattern and the kit came in but that has been fun um i don't know if i'll stitch on this this week well yeah we'll see um but i would like to just go ahead and finish this one it's a relatively small piece it's only 53 by 75 so they cut the fabric 9 by 11 I think it's going to finish about 5 by 7 um maybe even a tiny bit smaller it, it really is not very big because looking at it I have the this is the far edge over here and there's only a tiny little backstitched vine that runs down the side so you know the width of my hand it's, it's probably gonna fit in a five by seven frame is gonna be my guess I didn't since I was traveling I didn't my, do my usual measuring and all of that so um but that was my that was one start this one I started before I left I have had this in stash for a while and Sorry, I meant to have these out of the package so I wasn't crinkling it. 
Um, I've had this pattern for a while and I had bought the, the over dyed floss for it and I had never started it. So it was all stuck in with the pattern. Um, but part of why I fell in love with it was the colors of the flosses. It's a spring pattern, but it's a little bit different. It's called Season Spring and it's from Lila's Studio. And that is it. Um, it is 104 by 69. And I'm doing it on 32 count linen. So it will finish at six and a half by four and a quarter. It's a little bigger than what I would normally do for a small. I have to think about how I want to finish this. Um, but I loved for spring, it's not your typical pastels. It's more vibrant, deep colors. And I got a pretty good start going on it. So I got all of the cart done and some greenery and tulips. And I'll have the pattern up here. You can see what I've got done. So yeah, I've got the cart and the tulips. So next up will be these little bluish flowers in here. And then the birds and the word spring. I didn't realize when I bought it that these are Easter eggs down here. I am going to leave the Easter eggs off because I really would like to have it just be a longer season spring piece. Um, I will put spring on there, but I'm going to leave those little tiny Easter eggs off. But I'm a good chunk of the way through that. That did not take that long. And now that I look, I've got all of the greenery done. It truly is just those blue flowers, the blue birds, and then there is a light blue, it's hard to see on camera, Quaker up here in each corner and I'll have those and the word spring to do so I'm probably halfway or a little more than halfway done and that is just on 32 count antique white linen I had a piece in stash I wasn't even entirely sure what count it was um and it's very I don't know what brand it is either since it was from stash and it could have been very old stash um the threads have a lot of variation in their thick and thinness and i don't just mean like the occasion occasional shrub i don't know maybe you can see it if i hold it up close enough um like down here you can see there's a lot of variation in the thread thickness so the fabric itself has a lot of um texture and interest to it but um i'm happy with that so far and it, it does have my favorite green in here so um, so that was a start and a whip. This next one, I'm really excited. I want, I want to finish this one this spring so badly. It is Isabella's Garden from Lavender and Lace. And here's the photo from the pattern. And I was doing her also for a spring piece. Um, they the fabric that's on here, I think it's called Copper Penny. It's not made anymore. Um, I am doing it on 32 count Abyss from Fabrics by Stephanie. And I'm going to juggle holding this up because it's still in my Q-snap. Um, I got done this week uh, all of these flowers and about half of these, a little bit of the green was done over here and all of the bubbles. And I have started on her um, arm would be here and her face. So I've just started that. This is like the back of her neck. Um, I stopped on this bubble because I was counting up from down here. And this bubble ends up with her little bubble blower thing. And I started worrying if I got too far with that bubble, it may not line up with her blower thing. So I want to stitch her face and the pipe for the blowing of the bubble, and then I'll finish that bubble last. So all I really have to do is that bubble and her head and arm. 
and then there is some beading although this one doesn't have a lot of beading it's got a few just random ones out with the bubbles and then there are beads down here along the bottom of her skirt and where there's a lot of beading these spaces that you see in here in her lace um collar on her dress those will become beads so sorry this is i should have uh pulled this off the cue snap but i was kind of rushing to get ready to film here and then i had i had a i had some chunks of the pink dress that weren't done either but i really really want to finish her this spring maybe by the next time you see you see it you know i can go pretty fast on that one all right this last one that i worked on is from carolyn manning it's my travel piece and it's called Star Starstruck. This is the pattern. Um, her designs are all available as PDFs. I, you can get them in shops as well. I did buy this one as a PDF. I don't usually because I tend to work on paper copies anyway. Um, but this one I did buy as a PDF. And I got a lot done on this. So this I took with me. I thought I wasn't going to stitch on this again until August when I go to Alaska, but it is the perfect, um, it's on Ada because it'll be full coverage and I can work on it in low light. Um, I don't need any kind of magnification. It can even be kind of crappy light, like in a ship lounge, um, or my hotel room. And, um, I, I can still stitch stitch on it so I got a lot done I took this to stitch on the plane I didn't on the way out because my flight was at 7 a.m. so I had to get up at 4 a.m. and so I slept the whole flight out but then in the evenings in my hotel room and then really the whole flight back I stitched on it so all I had done before was this top corner and I think one of these blue diamonds, I will insert a picture in up here, this way, of where I was at. I did take a photo of this one before I, um, before I left, but I got pretty far on that. You'll see there's a lot of white chunks kind of, I'm jumping around. It was partly just so I didn't have to change colors, um, that I could, could just keep stitching with one color for a while that was easier to juggle on the plane. And also because some of what's gonna get filled in is um, like 3865 or one of the like almost whites. And because this is my travel piece and will get handled a lot and maybe not when my hands are the cleanest, I'm gonna leave the white to last to stitch because I don't want it getting grubby over time. So that's what some of those some of those blocks are gonna get filled in with it. There's, there's two chunks of it up here, right there, those two triangles. And they are so white that I'm worried about them. But really everything in, I mean, all of this will be full coverage and it will be about this big. Um, with, it looks like I did a three inch border all the way around. So I don't remember what size this finishes, maybe 14 by 14, something like that. but really happy with it so far um great great travel partly because the pattern repeats so at some point you have to think a little less um partly because i can do it on ada it's going to be full coverage nobody's going to see what fabric is under there and partly um because i can stitch for quite a bit with one color before swap before you know, it would be too far to jump and I've got to swap and, and bring another color in. So great travel piece. I have a couple of her other patterns. I don't think when I bought them, I really thought about how much work a full coverage like that was going to be. Um, so I don't know that the other patterns are going to get done, but maybe because it is a fantastic piece for travel. Um... All right, that was all of my stitching, uh, cross stitch stitching. Let me show you now. I've got some haul to show, and I have a couple project bags that I made this last weekend 
on my quilt weekend. But I forgot to show, this was the raffle basket that I won at Needle Fest Extravaganza. It's all um, 20 count Lugana, which I love to stitch one of one over one on, or um, do like four over two, and then you take a pin cushion and make it pillow size, like I've shown a few things before. But just really yummy um, spring colors, and none of them are colors that I have in my stash. So this was a raffle that you bought raffle tickets for, and I put almost all my raffle tickets in here, and I won it. So I'm very excited with that, and I don't know what I'm going to stitch on any of them, but I've had the basket just sitting out on my kitchen table like it's a bouquet of flowers or something because it's so yummy just to look at. I forgot to show, too, when I was at Needlework Extravaganza, um, I used the Valdani threads in the Rosewood Manor Autumn Quakers and Winter Quakers that I started, and when you go to pull the thread off, these little balls want to go rolling across the floor, and then you're, like, winding, you know, just trying to wrestle your thread. Do you want it wound back around here, or is it what you were still winding and whatever you wanted to use to cut lengths? Um, but... Susan, and I can't remember the name of the booth, Stitching with Susan, Stitches by Susan, had Valdani threads. And if you bought Valdani thread, you could also buy this little plastic thing. It's got one little hole in it. So your thread can actually pull through there and then you don't have your thread rolling across the room and having to figure out how to unravel it. And I did remember this M49 is what the snowflakes are in on the Winter Quaker and I was burning through this pretty fast. I knew I was gonna need another spool of this. So I bought it so that I could also, you could only buy the little plastic thing if you bought a spool of thread. So I found it and bought it so that I could get the little plastic thing, but I don't know where, um, I've never seen these before, but it's pretty clever. I don't, if you're a knitter, um, I don't know, that would be tiny for knitting yarn. Um, and then I've shown before, I am prone to buying key keychains to use for zipper pulls. And Utah is the beehive state. So I did buy this keychain um, and I'm gonna put it on some project with a bee. And I'm gonna show, I actually bought a couple bee patterns and I have some bee patterns already, but that's my plan for that. So at Shepherd's Bush, I bought the Summer Notes kit. I did buy one other pattern and this was Scatter Snowflakes and they had it stitched up there just as this little pillow, which was probably about, I don't know, three by nine. Um, I've done the Scatter, Scatter Eggs and I have some of the other scatter patterns that I was doing on like the 20 count Lugana four over two to make a large pillow size. This one might be too long to do that with, but um, it would be fun to do on a large count. I'd have to see how large it would come out and um, put it on a bag. We'll see. It's not, the photo's not the best, so I'm afraid it's not showing up very well for you guys. Then I got Jeanette Douglas Chubby Bee. I just love that cute little bee, even though he looks more like a bumblebee than a honeybee, but he's a chubby bee. And I think that was a market release. So I'm going to do that one. And the Primrose Cottage Stitches, I would rather be stitching. I picked that one up. And that one, that one came out last year. I just don't, didn't have that one. It was one of the first things I found as I was on like my third round through Shepherd's Bush. This was the first pattern that I picked up. And then I found a few others, but I decided I still wanted that one. And then this one, let me take it out of the plastic because I think it will show up better. This is a Brenda Gervais and it's called Grandma's Candy Dish. And this is another case of... I need to pay attention to the stitch count. Um, to me, this looked like it would be big. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I thought it was bigger than like a normal size candy dish, which is sitting next to it. But this finishes 
on uh, 36 count. It's four and three quarters by three and five eighths. So this is a small, but I love this bunny candy dish. Um, we didn't have the bunny, but we had the hen that half our mothers had, or grandmothers. Actually, I think my mother and my grandmother had the white milk glass hen. It's probably still in my in the bottom of the china closet at my dad's house. Um, but yeah, that's why I bought this one. It was it was for the candy dish. I I do like milk glass. Um, that's what I display most of my smalls in are milk glass bowls and um, that kind of candy dish definitely has a nostalgia factor for me. I remember those in everybody's house. That was the good candy dish. Um, anyway, then at Pine Needles... I bought a tiny bit of fabric. I was good. I bought two fat quarters. I want to make project bags out of these. Um, this one was just sweet with little, it's very retro, but very sweet looking with the little dog and birds and teacups and sundaes. And I liked it. And then this other one, Sorry, got to figure out where my piles are going here. Um, this one, my friend Lana had shown me, and I wasn't sure about the colors. And in person, I'm glad I wasn't sure about the colors. When I first saw it, I was like, ooh, I'm going to buy that fabric pack. Um, but this red is very orange, so not my favorite red. I like red that's bluer. Um, but it's, it's another retro Grandma's Kitchen kind of pattern. And then I bought... Um, some weeks I work linen. What the heck is this called? Red pear, I think. Um, I didn't have any pink or red in my stash when I was starting my Valentine's Easter spring stitching. And so that was the one fabric that I told myself if I saw any in that range of pink that I could buy it. And pine, pine needles had that. Then I bought Hands On Design Gather Wildflowers. These are some smalls. These came out this year, I think, at Market. And I don't know why they didn't catch my eye at when I was looking at the Market stuff. But those are just cute little round ones. They don't say... They're 53 by 52, so they're going to finish fairly small. And I love looking for... When I'm at stitch shops like that looking for designers that I've never heard of and this is Emily Call Stitching and they had this stitched up um and I love their model and then when I hadn't seen her it looks like she's on Etsy as well it's emilycall.etsy.com um and she has a blog I haven't checked out the blog yet but this just came out this year and it's called Be Mine and I haven't looked to see like is are her patterns is she being distributed so that they're on like one, two, three stitch or any of the other places, but she does have an Etsy shop, Emily call. There's her name down there. But, um, I love that little kind of retro looking girl, um, with the be Mary, be, Oh, be mine, be mine. So Valentine's and then pine needles. The owner is Sandra Workman is also the designer for Pine Mountain Designs. And I, they do quilt patterns and cross stitch. And it was a lot of fun to see the samples in there. They didn't have a lot of samples, but the two patterns that I bought, now that I look at, they were samples that I liked. Um, and their patterns, the photos do not do them justice. I did look at 123 Stitch does have their patterns and in some cases better pictures. So. This one is Some See a Wish, and it says Some See a, a Weed, Some See a Wish, and it's got some dandelion. Oh, it's showing up good on camera. It looks better on camera than it does in person. I mean, the, the photo in person. It looks really good, really in person, stitched up. Um, and it's on 28 count. It only finishes five and a half by seven, so... It's a fairly small piece. And then this other one is Welcome Spring. And it's another, I think, I'm pretty sure it was in a five by seven frame. 
this was sitting on a shelf in the shop and I loved the sample and then went looking for the pattern. And it's called Springtime in the Village. And a nice one with no, no bunnies or chicks or things that sp scream Easter. So like I would leave this out through May. Unlike Christmas, I don't leave my Easter stuff out for two months afterwards. Um, I'll confess, I do still have Easter stuff out, but that's because I've been gone since Easter. I just got back Sunday late. Um, I know I've been working and catching up on laundry and some things like that. So Easter has not come down yet. So the last thing I'm going to show, these are just a couple bags that I made. And they're all very similar, but I did something slightly different on each of them. Um, I made these at my sewing weekend. This is the Teresa Kogut line that was out, I don't know, two years ago, maybe last year. It feels like two years ago, but it might have been last year. Um, with the embroidery hoop designs and I just had a charm pack of that fabric and so I just stitched a bunch of them together. This one is bigger. This one I put the zipper on top and these I put it on the side. I've had these all cut out ready to stitch for a year and last time I worked on stitching them I got myself turned around like a boob and when you open the zipper, instead of it being the inside of the bag, it was between the lining and like the front. It, it just, I hadn't assembled it properly. And so then I got mad and shoved it on the bag and I forced myself to pull it out. And the back is a piece of Blackbird Designs fabric. So that's a line that was out last year, the year before, wh whenever this was. Um, I think last year and that, and I, and I fussy cut that out for all of the bags. Um, not sure entirely what I'm going to do with those that I was originally starting to stitch up bags to use for table gifts for one of the upcoming retreats, probably stitch New Jersey. Um, but since I had some fights with these bags, they're not my top quality. So I don't know that I want to give them away at, to people. And I think that is everything I have. Let me do a quick glance around. Yes, that's everything I have for this week. And um, I will be back again in two weeks. And that one will be April 26th. And I will start it out with patterns that I will be giving away for Flossiversary. It's been a year already. I can't believe it. It doesn't feel like, you know how some things like they feel like longer than they have been. And then in other ways they feel shorter. This is one of those. I feel like I've only been doing this a few months. And then on the other hand, it feels like a really long time. Depends, I guess, what moment I'm in, which way I think. But um, yeah, I think that's everything for this week. So everybody have a fantastic couple of weeks. And I will see you again soon. Bye.